Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our uh, New Allen Park and Rec Commission meeting, March 14th, 2016. Great uh, group. Thanks for joining us on this uh, beautiful spring day and a special welcome to our guest, Mayor. Thanks for being here. Brody, mm -hmm. shout out to you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> and uh, Clay, it's great to have you here as well. Um, hopefully everybody had a chance to review the agenda that was sent out ahead of this meeting. Um, look for a motion to approve the agenda that was sent or any comments or recommendations to change the agenda. Okay, so approve, second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve the March 14th mm -hmm. agenda as published. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item uh, was to review the minutes from our February 8th meeting. They were again sent out in the packet. We'd be looking for any corrections or additional information to share with the minutes from our last meeting. I'll move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. On item number four on our agenda, reviewing um, the uh, department activity report that was included in the packet as well. Opportunity to ask questions of uh, Director Schmitz or Assistant Director Corman on any of the activity um, or program updates. There, were, thank you. There were a couple graphs, charts included in the packet this time. Mm -hmm. Shows a membership and a breakout of senior members from 2013, 14, 15, and 16, mm -hmm. so we can see trend line. I did that to show the difference between. As you can see, the, how the, the individual memberships went down, those senior type memberships went up. That's that what that explains the the downswing and then the upswing, because mm -hmm. those are now recorded as admissions instead of membership revenue. Just of interest, uh, wh why the why the change? Just just for some background on that. It's the way that the insurance company is handling payment to us. They used to reimburse the member and now they're paying us directly per visit so it's, a, it's an admission revenue instead of a monthly membership revenue fee whatever has every insurance company done that i know that my insurance company switched from one system the senior to another. portion of the memberships um I, most of them are like that now okay because like i said my my insurance last year reimbursed me for my membership and then they've just made a change so uh, that I, I had a, a understanding of that so we still have n it looks like 1642 I suppose if you add the 1538 well no I'm sorry yeah 1642 um, memberships if do the seniors have to come so many times a month as well no, no. That's the difference. that is the difference they ju I mean they um, right. Sometimes insurance reimbursements, you have to go 10 times right. at least. It, it's not like that? No. Okay. So we want them to come often. Oh, and they do. <laughs> I think I think there's a, I mean, that's about 1,600 people then. Uh. Mm -hmm. So in 2014, thanks for bringing up that question, just for clarification, under the senior memberships, it says 360. Was the 360 included in the 1538 number or not? Mm -mm. No. Okay. But back then, there weren't oh. as many supplements that were a part of I, it, yeah. it, it, it's just the way it's just the way that the programs have changed mm -hmm. some some have added the program the benefit and some of them um, just changed the format from a reimbursement to a per visit mm -hmm. okay. so would this mean though that am I interpreting it correctly then our individual memberships even if we kind of carve out the senior membership are lower in 16 than they were two years ago. So we are seeing a downward trend. Slightly, yes. Okay. So uh, the insurance company uh, reimburses uh, the uh, park and rec every time someone checks in? What for right now, that's the, what the contract says. They pay per visit okay. up to a max. There's a cap. Oh, okay. They'll only pay for like maybe 10 visits or per month. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is, is 10. Okay. Any sense then for the kind of downward trend in memberships or 
I mean, is it um, competition, some it, facilities, some of it insurance is redesign? We don't have some of the equipment that people are looking for. Okay. Mainly weight equipment is is a is one thing that we're really lacking in our facility. I've heard that also from some of the people that I see in the uh, strength room. You're right. Okay. Free weights. Um, more of the CrossFit type cable exercise. They're all strength. That's the number one complaint that we get. Okay. Is you know we're just we're out of space. We can't. We don't have any room to add. We we tried to add some sp some things in the little nooks and crannies in the corners. Now even into the field house, you'll see there's some pieces mm -hmm, in there, mm -hmm. but there's nowhere to go for the strength. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or discussion on the department activity report? <coughs> okay, hearing none, that will be filed uh, with uh, this meeting. The meeting minutes on to item number five, City Council meeting recap, Director Schmitz. <coughs> Thank you, Chair Fryer and commissioners. Uh, as usual, there were two city council meetings since our last commission meeting. February 16th saw the city council approve the year-end transfers and encumbrances. Uh, purchases that hadn't been received yet in 2015 were rolled over into 2016. They also uh, approved the resolution supporting a Minnesota bonding request uh, for local parks and trails in greater Minnesota. I'm actually going up to the Capitol tomorrow to testify at the House Capital Investment Committee um, for uh, Greater Minnesota um, funding. And then they authorized uh, tent camping for the Bicycle Across, America, uh, Across Minnesota event for August at Harmon Park the 18th. Finally, the City Council um, eliminated the uh, fee for the Career Expo at the Civic Center as you had recommended they do so. March 1st saw the City Council approve the uh, plan, specs, bid advertising and opening for the uh, poured in place rubber surfacing at the Herman Heights Playground. So that concludes park and rec activity at the last two City Council meetings. Any questions or discussion on the City Council reports? Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to old business. Um, item number six was uh, renew committee update and our, our last meeting um, it, it's been I guess uh, it'll be four weeks and since our last meeting um, we have another meeting tomorrow evening um, March 15th at that meeting the main agenda will be reviewing um, criteria ranking for the proposals that will be coming in I think I shared the last meeting there were about nine different criteria the committee was going to be utilizing to um, evaluate proposals that were coming in for the renew committee so those were examples not to try to remember them all but diverse community benefit um, regional impact economic development social well-being um, the the burden on the budget kind of what type of subsidization would be needed from the city um, and what our committee um, ended up doing independently or individually was to rank all of those and then we we're going to take an average of our rankings to come up with um, kind of an overall committee score. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow those results will be reviewed and kind of see where the committee would like to go with that. I think the committee recognizes they don't see this as an end all of making decisions, have some score make all the decisions, but absolutely be a guide in helping the committee understand there's 14 proposals. How do you kind of narrow that and prioritize those <laughs> um, from across the community? Another key date will be the end of the month mm -hmm. um, where final or full proposals will be due to the city of New Ulm. So um, we'll have one more meeting before those proposals would be due. And then uh, let's just say probably a, a busy and active April and the rest of the spring um, doing our assessment and evaluation of all the proposals, one from the Park and Rec Department as well as from other city departments and uh, a few community um, agencies or organizations. Questions on the ranking criteria or that process that the committee is going to be utilizing? So just this is just a question about the meetings. So you meet uh, tomorrow after uh, city council. Correct. And then you'll meet again the first Tuesday in April, right? Well, and we've added, uh, I believe we've added one meeting at the end of this month. Do you remember, Cheryl and Tom? 
We added March 29th. Oh, so okay. Yep. So we're gonna, and so we're, you are going to meet. And we are discussing, um, right now our schedule has been two meetings a month, mm -hmm. and we are looking at the calendar and, and likely adding at a minimum a third meeting each month, okay. just knowing, you know, our goal is, you know, two to three months to be through the evaluation and some sort of recommendation. And if there is not only review of proposals, but discussions with organizations, Park and Rec Department, other city departments, okay. we know that's going to take probably more than just two meetings a month to do that, to get through that work. Okay, thank you. Any other <coughs> questions? Uh, I know um, department leadership has um, been working on our proposals, taking them from the uh, kind of the initial form or the short form um, application to the full proposal form, and that is due by the end of the month. So I hope there'll be an opportunity. Maybe we won't be meeting again, but at least for this committee commission to see the full full proposals that go in. We had agreed of which proposals we wanted to submit, but kind of the final narrative, kind of leaving to Director uh, Schmitz and Assistant Director Corman to to work on that. So if anyone's interested in being involved more than you have been in selecting the projects, then I probably recommend getting in touch with Tom or Cheryl. Okay, any other questions for me? Great, thank you. Um, con feel free to contact me at any time if you have questions about the Renew Committee, our process, the agenda, um, discussions there. Absolutely want to make myself available not only to this committee but to, to the community to help provide information that's needed. On new business, item number seven be our donations uh, for the month, and there's an action form along with that. So I'll look to uh, <coughs> Director Schmitz if you want to highlight anything on this uh, recommendation form and any questions from the Commission. Thank you, Chair Fryer and Commissioners. Um, I'll go ahead and read into the record here, uh, paraphrasing uh, quite a number of donations offered to the city this month. Uh, the first project is um, the third and final scoreboard at Harmon Park. Field two is the multi-purpose field, which is uh, softball and football. Um, there's uh, a number of donations there. $2,000 from the Knights of Columbus State Foundation. $1,500 from the local Knights of Columbus in New Ulm. $500 from New Ulm Area uh, Cathedral Football Program. $1,500 um, from the Cathedral Athletic Department. $200 from Girls Fast Pitch Softball Association and then installation services from a local e electric firm of Paul's Electric. Uh, so that will be taking place this spring uh, upon uh, concurrence from you and the City Council. Uh, the second uh, is uh, a, a donation to the German Park Outdoor Performing Arts Center Amphitheater Replacement Project of $1,000 cash from George Glotzbach. That account now has uh, a little over $300,000 in it, and we're looking for more funding to, uh, to move that project forward. Then for the days of play, which are a few uh, days throughout the year in, w in which we're offering free or low-cost activities at the Recreation Center, there's $1,248 from the New All Medical Center and Alina Health System, $500 from Alliance Bank, also $500 from McDonald's, $250 each from both the Lions Club and Citizens Bank, $100 each both from DNA Trucking and Laraway Roofing. And the uh, fourth and final um, chunk of gifts goes to the uh, Fitness Fun Days that we also host <coughs> at the uh, Recreation Center through the generous uh, partnership with New Alm Medical Center and Alina Health Systems. They're uh, providing $752 cash to assist with <coughs> that activity. So I uh, recommend that you forward this on to the City Council for their acceptance of these generous donations. I'd make that motion. I'll second that. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to recommend approval of the acceptance of these donations. Any more discussion? I would just have a, a question um, of interest, and that is um, with, with uh, what generates some of these donations? Like, like for instance, Harmon Park and Days of Play. Does Park and Rec solicit some of these? I mean, it's hard for me to imagine they just come come in in and of themselves <laughs> without <laughs> some kind of coordination or stimulus yeah. from somewhere. <laughs> I'd just be interested in how that might come about. 
if you give some sense there of certainly, that. Certainly, uh, commissioners, it's a combination of all of the above. Sometimes a project comes from a user group or an idea comes from a user group or an individual, and then we work with them to, uh, to kind of put together the package and, and determine the funding um, options. Um, other times, uh, and that's kind of what happened at Harmon Park, you know, the, uh, the softball and, and football uh, groups had an interest in seeing a scoreboard on that field that doesn't have a scoreboard. It's happened at other athletic parks. Um, and then there's a lot of other uh, coordinations and collaborations we have with Heart of New Ulm and uh, our medical community. I don't know if Assistant Director Corman wants to address um, anything here. The Day of Play, as you recall, uh, was an event that started probably about four or five years ago when the Surgeon General came to visit New Ulm. And the event was put together with a lot of coordination between the New Ulm Medical Center, Hearts Be Back, and MLC. And the event continued at MLC for two years, and then the third year was moved into the Civic Center. And it's been there for the last two or three years um, just because of the weather element. And they have decided, MLC has decided to back out of that event. And so now the city is taking that over. And so Joey and I have been feverishly fundraising. Um, what we want to do is we want to, we, we met with the medical center, and what we want to do is break that one day event into like two to four big large scale events that are free for kids families mm -hmm. people of all ages and they're all active play types of events and so Joey and I are are in the process of fundraising and our goal is to try to get to 12,000 okay. to fund all three events mm -hmm. and so we are right now as of probably about noon today, like halfway. Okay. Could you provide uh, kind of, I know in your activity report, shared 650 participants at the first one, but are there other ways you're evaluating the success of the initial day of fun or fun day? Well, day of play, I'm sorry. I, um, in terms of. And did you get good feedback from all the kids and yeah. families? Oh, they love it. I mean, yeah. the. the that's the most that we've ever had for that kind of an event and so the three events that so what we did was with that with that particular one is we took the funds that were remaining from last year um, MLC turned them over to the city and that's what we used to run that event along with a sizable donation from the medical center um, and and so we were able to open that event up which normally cost ten dollars was free and so it attracted a huge amount of people um, the kids loved it they had fun we're going to do another type similar type event this summer but make it more family oriented it'll be outside at german park it's tentatively scheduled for august 18th and then end the night with an with an outdoor movie so to just kind of um, slow things down at the end of the night uh, and then of course in the winter we'll have a skating event at the civic center and then depending on if we can get to our twelve thousand then we'll do that winter blast again. Mm -hmm. So that's what our hope is, and I hope we can make it there. So okay. we spent a lot of time fundraising yeah. the last couple of weeks. I took the grand boys to the day of play, and it was, it was great fun. Um, for both, I had a two-year-old and a 12-year-old. Um, the, the only thing I would That's suggest funny. is because it was billed as an event that would, um, if you had children less than six, I think they were supposed to be with a parent or guardian, um, there wasn't a whole lot for the younger one to do. He would have loved to have jumped in the bouncy houses, but they were too big for him. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to be billed that way for an entire family, if there'd be one smaller type thing, um, they were f the ones that were there were were neat and the kids had a ball I there's no doubt but just something that he felt he could um, bounce in he managed needless to say there were plenty of other things he could do but uh, kids seem to like those bouncy things <laughs> so uh, just a thought and it was it's my understanding that the inflatables that we rented were for the older kids and then the one that we have is more for the younger kids and maybe that didn't it wasn't it, it wasn't one. out i talked to joey because we had the same issue that there was nothing for my littles to do he said that the other stuff was set up earlier and there wasn't room for it oh so there was so, supposed oh. to be one it was supposed to be okay. out there he said All right. okay 
so then it was billed appropriately, but right. it just didn't happen that way. Yeah. So okay. thanks, though. It was great fun. <laughs> right. Other questions, feedback, discussion? Thank you. I think we're to the vote part. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. On to item um, number eight under new business, Chamber of Commerce Visitor Guide Dispensers. Turn it back to Director Schmitz. Thank you, Chair Fryer and Commissioners. This action um, is requested by the New Almeria Chamber of Commerce, and uh, they are asking for the ability to place two visitor guide dispensers in two of our parks, one in each of uh, Shanlau Park by the, near the Glockenspiel and one up at Herman Heights Park. And um, there are times when the, uh, there's visitors throughout the community and uh, they have got a lot of information available uh, through the internet and through smartphones, but still the visitor guides are quite popular and there's quite a number of those produced annually through the chamber. And uh, you know, when the, they're not always available at all locations. And so uh, I think this is a very reasonable request. Uh, there's gonna be uh, no expense to the city and uh, it will be stocked and maintained by the Chamber of Commerce. They're weatherproof dispensers. There's a photograph of uh, uh, the example that's out in front of the Chamber of Commerce building downtown. Um, the, s the visitor guides are self-dispensed and free of cost. Um, you don't, there's no coin mechanism involved or, or currency. And uh, the city does reserve the right to rescind this authorization if for some reason there becomes an issue or, or a concern in the future and we're um, accepting no liability for their ma machines. So I would recommend that you uh, forward this on to the city council for their authorization. So moved. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and second to uh, authorize Chamber of Commerce to take care of the visitor guide dispensers. Any more discussion or questions on this proposal? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to uh, under new business item number nine, the Green Corps grant application. Director Schmitz. Thank you, Chair Fryer and Commissioners. This is a uh, grant program um, in which the state receives some federal funding and it's administered through the uh, Pollution Control Agency and it's the Green Core Program. They have a number of different emphasis areas. Um, I will point that out here under the overview of bullet number five. There's an emphasis area in urban forestry, one in en energy conservation, another in local foods, another in waste prevention and recycling, green transportation, stormwater, and finally living green are the uh, various different emphasis areas that this program uh, funds a participant, basically an employee um, of theirs that comes into a community for 11 months and assists the community in, in various projects and programs. The Tree Commission has initiated this and uh, as an advisor to the Tree Commission, along with the Engineering Department, the Public Works Department, and Public Utilities Commission, um, we are supportive of making this application in hopes of uh, obtaining a participant for 11 months beginning in September of this year to assist us in various aspects um, of you know, working on our urban forestry projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, under bullet number six, you can see what some of those are. Inventorying some of our trees, ho hopefully uh, all of them, at least in the, uh, our public trees. Uh, putting together tree planting plans um, in parks and trail areas and elsewhere. Uh, emphasizing species diversification. Also disease planning, you know, making sure we have an appropriate uh, response plan put together for emerald ash borer and some of the other vegetative diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, assisting with exotic and invasive species management. We've got a wonderful buckthorn um, eradication program in, in town with a key volunteer, um, Ellen Van Cura and others. Uh, but we can further expand our exotic and invasive species uh, programs to, uh, uh, with assistance of another individual. Public education is another key element where this participant would be going out in the community and giving programs 
and uh, also assisting in management of volunteers. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't cost the city anything in cash. Uh, we do need to provide this participant a uh, workspace and uh, we have that available uh, um, in, in a couple of different uh, city spaces. We also will be providing uh, a pickup truck, a surplus <laughs> pickup truck. The Public Works Department has one of those available. Um, the wages and benefits are uh, paid for by the Green Corps program itself, and the participant um, will need to obtain their own housing. Presently, um, the community has one of these participants um, through the Heart of New Alm and the Complete Streets and the Safe Routes to School program. And uh, it's working out very well for that group, and uh, um, it's assisting our community in, in getting more uh, work accomplished and more planning completed also. also. So if there's any questions, I can try uh, answering those questions. Um, there's a lot of information also available on the website, the PCA Green Corps website. And um, I'm uh, hoping that you're uh, uh, affirming this application and I will be asking the city council then tomorrow to authorize it. I had one question. Yeah. Uh, are these always just 11 months or is there any possibility of renewing uh, the application? Uh, commissioners, this is an 11 month position, but they can be, uh, you can reapply. Okay. Uh, my understanding is that's what's happening with the existing uh, participant here that uh, Safe Routes to School and um, the Complete Streets group along with Heart of New Alm are very happy with it and they're going to be reapplying. Um, or uh, I don't know if it would be this participant or a, or a different participant to um, come in for the following 11 mm -hmm. months. You can also apply for up to two positions at a time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the tree commission and, and uh, myself were thinking that we would uh, uh, you know, go for one mm -hmm. uh, participant at, uh, at this, for this cycle. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Any more discussion, questions? Schmidt. Move adoption. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to recommend City Council authorize uh, the grant application for the Green Corps program. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, last item of new business, item number 10 on our, on our agenda, German Park Amphitheater bonding bill. Director Schmitz. Thank you, Chair Fryer and Commissioners. Um, I'm asking you to recommend the City Council um, authorize requesting $300,000 from the 2016 Minnesota Legislative Bonding Bill to match our local funding that's already in place uh, in order to upgrade the German Park Outdoor Performing Arts Center Amphitheater, including the uh, accessibility and safety improvements laid out in the uh, um, feasibility plan report that's been previously conducted. I think we're all quite familiar with this space. Um, it was redeveloped in the 1990s and the grass terraces have slumped, making them unusable for the mobility impaired and for setting lawn chairs on the terraces. Uh, the Friends of German Park have funded the uh, um, initial um, pl concept plan uh, to upgrade this amphitheater, uh, including uh, you know concrete terraces and ramps and staircases with safety hand railings. Um, this type of amphitheater was part of the original master plan of mm -hmm. the park but wasn't constructed in the 90s due to a lack of funding at that time. Hmm. Um, my verbal discussions with Senator Dames and Representative Torkelson have been uh, uh, good and uh, they're very interested in seeing if they can uh, assist us in this project upon your recommendation and city council approval. Uh, you see in the budgetary area where we're at now with the financing, uh, there was a $25,000 cash donation initially. We've also received a $10,000 donation and uh, recently a $100,000 pledge and uh, the $1,000 donation that's on today's agenda. We've matched uh, the $135,000 with uh, municipal funding mm -hmm. from the Park and Recreation budget. Um, and American Artstone Incorporated of New Ulm has pledged product 
mm -hmm. uh, to the tune of thirty to forty thousand dollars if we use that product in the uh, uh, development and construction. So we've got a uh, little over three hundred thousand uh, dollars ready to go, and if the state is able to match that, we'll have a uh, regionally significant, um, important outdoor performing arts center um, in our community and in in the area. So it doesn't cost us any money to ask. I'm uh, recommending we, uh, we we proceed with the ask. I'll move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? And uh, do you have any idea what the timelines here are? The first committee deadline is uh, April 1st at the legislature. Okay. So we know this is a bonding session, sh short session. Mm -hmm. uh, we should get information soon. We'll we'll see. Um, how things pan out with the House and Senate and, and the governor. Mm -hmm. Great. I guess the question I would have uh, is kind of the process to get to the request for the the, the bond funding from the state. Uh, you know, if it's this project versus another project for the city or Herman Park or kind of how did we arrive? Is it because of the pledges we have to date and of bringing this as match funding or how did we get to this is the one request to the state legislature for bond funding. Um, great question. This uh, this idea came from the uh, the two large donors uh, and okay. pledgers so far. They they um, presented this as an option, uh, requesting us to pursue it. And so uh, I said I'd run it up the flagpole and we'll give it a try. We certainly have other potential uh, bonding requests of the state in the future, including assistance at uh, Herman Heights Park. And um, my conversations with Senator Dames and Representative Torkelson in the past uh, have, have been positive, and they're very interested in helping us um, further these regionally and statewide significant projects, um, including Herman Heights um, down the road. That might be something we pursue in two years. Because at least in my time on the committee, I think this is the first time we've actually requested or recommended bonding funding for a project for Park and Rec? Is that? Uh, it is also in my it? 10 years here, but prior to that, there was some involved with Herman. Okay. You know, the couple of phases of Herman restoration in the past have received some uh, state support. My understanding is how this works is they don't necessarily give the money directly to the city. The legislature gives it to an, uh, um, a, a state department, and then the state department works with us um, wh whether it would be the Historical Society or the DNR, um, you know, I'm not quite certain yet. But uh, yeah, this is uh, new and exciting, relatively new, and um, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's people in the legislature that look fondly upon this area, this region, and this community, and, and we'll see what, we'll what see. the outcome is. You know, this is a, a relatively small ask. The uh, the Herman ask will be uh, probably at least one zero at the end of that uh, <laughs> number we're talking about today. I, I, I reason why I asked the question, uh, I think it's a great idea, supportive of it, um, but much like we did with the renew or the local option sales tax, kind of work through a process of saying what are all the opportunities we think that make sense from a, a bonding request, and to kind of work those through the committee and say okay. And mm -hmm. also talking with the legislatures of A, B, or C, which ones do they think have the best chance of working into a bonding bill? And maybe it's this one, or maybe it's another one. But uh, I think next time, if we kind of review our strategic priority list for the city and kind of come up with, okay, it's German Park, or it's Herman Park, or it's whatever the project is on behalf of the city, of understanding where the need is and also where the greatest likelihood of uh, success at the state capitol. Are just my comments. Any other discussion? So we have a motion and second on the table. I so make a motion. Second. All those in. F oh. Yeah, I think we had. Oh, already. Right. Right. I just talked too <laughs> much in between. Enough. We forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I sure forgot. <laughs> right. right. We have a motion and second already. All those in favor? Uh, yeah. Aye. 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 Opposed? Yay. That wasn't a. No, no, no. That was a yay. That was a yay. Everybody's in favor. You can't vote twice, no, no, I don't no, think. I don't, no, no. All right. Thank you. All Motion right, passes. Trouble. Okay. <laughs> On to the report section. Director Schmitz. Thank you, Chair Fryer and Commissioners. Um, I'm not going to read into the record all of the various items the department is working on. 
uh, and has completed. I, I might highlight a few. We're certainly uh, um, very involved with uh, the restroom improvement project at uh, Johnson Park and Johnson Field. Uh, we're uh, still kind of fine-tuning some of the master plans we've been working on in the past uh, year with uh, um, the Minnesota River Regional Parkway and uh, the athletic complex. Uh, we've got a variety of, of small to mid-sized projects we're involved with. Uh, we're excited about the uh, new bicycle racks that we'll be placing out in the parks um, this year through a coordination with Heart of New Alm. So if there's any questions um, or comments about anything listed here or possibly even something that's not listed. I would have a question. Um, you know, you talk about doing the restroom restoration at Johnson Park uh, or that kind of thing. How does that fit into that whole plan that, um, what was it, INS group was working on? I mean, we're not doing something, we're not siloing this piece and then they're gonna do something else and then it doesn't work anymore, I would assume. <laughs> right, yes. Um, there's a lot of different elements in that uh, proposed conceptual master plan and uh, the restroom improvement has been something we've been working on and discussing prior to uh, beginning the master plan study. So we are going to be uh, constructing that in a manner that is consistent with future developments. And that's one of the reasons it's been taking so long oh, okay. um, to make sure that we don't do something now that hinders a future phase or future element uh, of that master plan. Good. Thank you. I might also point out we're working presently with two Eagle Scout candidates um, to assemble some new picnic tables in the Herman Heights shelter, shelters. And um, also some improvements at the dog park. Connor Drill and Kelby Stocker are two Eagle Scout candidates we're working with now. The um, reg next registration season is coming up quickly. It will begin on the 10th or is it the 11th? I see a typographical error there. Uh, it, it is the 11th, <laughs> Monday the 11th, not the 101st. Uh, Monday the 11th of April at 10 a.m. Registration will go live on the internet uh, and the website or in person at the Recreation Center and the brochure will be uh, published in the Sunday Journal on the 3rd of April and come out then in the shopper uh, the following Tuesday. So we're excited about the next uh, uh, programming season uh, just in front of us. Any other questions or comments? Uh, we're very, uh, this is our busy time at the Civic Center. You know, we lost ice a week ago and uh, had a very successful farm show. Uh, Joe's camper has moved in today. And so there's a week long camper show in both arenas. Uh, we took the ice out yesterday at the North Arena. And then uh, after that, it's Easter, right? Yes, Easter happens. And then it's the home show. Uh, you know, the weekend of April 2nd, double wide garage sale the following weekend, uh, uh, April 9th. And then we put ice back in on uh, probably the north side uh, for the Adult Hockey Association tournament on Saturday, April 16th. So it's a very frantic time for our maintenance crew at the <laughs> Civic Center through March and, uh, and early April. Um, I think that's kind of the end of my report. Question right. from Commissioner Slaughterall. Is there, uh, have there been any further developments uh, since the last meeting with the junior hockey franchise negotiation? Sure, I'll let uh, Assistant Director Corman address that question. Last week, the final agreement, or what we believe is the final agreement, went out to the, to the franchise owners, and we're just waiting for it to be signed. Mm -hmm. um, as you recall, once the commission when it, when it came to the commission last month, there were some little final details that needed to be worked out. Um, and I, sp I, I believe those have all been worked out. We're just waiting for the contract to come back signed. As I recall, there was some uh, liquor negotiation issues and... Uh there is a contingency in the contract that if, if they can't get that worked out, 
then that they, that's their that's their out because that's one that is one of the requirements that they are standing firm on. Well, my understanding is uh, things are coming together, and uh, it appears to be 99% certain that there will be a uh, junior franchise moving in this summer and uh, utilizing the Civic Center this, this next winter, the 16-17 season. Um, so I expect an announcement to come out uh, relatively soon to have that lease consummated. Is, does that help clarify what you were looking for? Yes. With the the junior hockey league okay any other questions for director schmitz or assistant director foreman we are uh commissioner reports any other reports from the commissioners today no director schmitz uh how are you feeling about um work session or to the rest of the commissioners uh, is there a desire are there hot topics that you think we should be gathering um, to discuss before our next scheduled meeting in April. Obviously, I'd advise to kind of continue to monitor the activity at the Renew Committee related to the local option sales tax, but anything else you want to gather together to discuss? If not, we'll, uh, our next meeting, April 11th, we'll regather here at 4 p.m. Meetings adjourned. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.